president of the Mountaineers at that time, uh, Chet Powell, uh, chaired the meeting and uh, say he announced in effect that we wanted to set up this particular new group in the Cascades and, you know, thinking that we were still fighting for the uh, Glacier Peak Wilderness area. And uh, we did. We came down there. We had a constitution already written. We had already picked out who was going to be the board members. And we just, in effect, we took over and we announced all that. And we got, we got it done. Uh, from that point on, uh, uh, we had one of our first, uh, maybe it may have been our first meeting as a, as a board. We met in Yakima. And uh, Brower came to the meeting, flew up from San Francisco, came up and said he had done some film and he'd like to show it to us. And so we adjourned to uh, uh, one of the person's home uh, from the Yakima area. And, <clears throat> and he showed us the film and, and we said, oh, this, this, this won't do. You just, uh, we see so little of the, of the uh, Glacier Peak Wilderness area on the, on the, on the uh, let's see, the south side of the, of the, uh, of the ridges. And uh, so he went back, put it together as a film, and it was called Wilderness Alps of the Stahican. Now that became a very major part of what we were up to because, frankly, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, that film. They made something like thirty or forty copies of that film, and we were showing it all over the area here in uh, in Western Washington mainly, and uh, I think maybe a few times it got over into into Spokane, and we had people who were willing to take the film. When it, and mail it out to organizations, and when it was mailed back, they were they were willing to to uh, make sure that the film was rewound and all ready to go again, and then mail it out to other people. So this film just kept circulating. In the meantime, the Mountaineers had put out a book on the, on the uh, Cascades. It was kind of a tabletop book, and uh, that was done by. Uh, uh, by the organization itself, and uh, but later, uh, Brower said, you know, I'd like to have a, a somebody you know, from, say, up in your area. I'd like to have them write a book, and I will put together a what they called a tabletop book. You know, it was one of those things. It was all pictures and some writing in it and things. And they said, do you have a writer? And we said, yeah, we got a good writer up here, Harvey Manning. <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh, we approached uh, Harvey Manning and asked him if he would do that. And Brower actually did, approached him. And he said, sure, I'll, I'll write it. And um, so the result of that was the, the book, uh, the, uh, say, The North Cascades. The Forgotten Parkland, and it, uh, that uh, book was too became, say, instrumental in what was going on because, among other things, Brower took copies of that. I mean, they were selling it; they were making money on it because it was such. They, they had, you know, they had uh, pictures in there such such people as Ansel Adams, who was, you know, was a person that was, uh, well, esteemed for his photography of Yosemite National Park. But, <clears throat> so, uh, among other places that book was sent, was sent out to members of Congress. That was a lot of books to send out, you know, uh, and Brower got away with it. To the with the Sierra Club because uh, they were they were growing, 
and say getting bigger all the time. So they had a their membership was had really increased to say a thousand or a couple thousand people or so. And so they could they could do that. So we were we were uh, working on this, and then uh, 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 Brower and Grant McConnell in 19, uh, 19, said the our organization was organized in 1957, and later that year was when when uh, uh, Harvey uh, Dave Brower had done the film of let's say Wilderness Alps and the Stehekin. And then they announced at the end of that year that uh, they had decided that uh, this should be a national park. It should not be just a wilderness area. Because there was so much area up there that it was, it was just absolutely spectacular. <coughs> For example, <coughs> the, uh, you can go from, from let's say, uh, uh, Mount Baker to, say, the Metal Valley, and you have some of the most fantastic mountains anywhere in the United States, it would compare favorably, or maybe superior to, Glacier National Park. The peaks there were, uh, uh, some of them were uh, 8,500 8, feet high, almost 9,000 feet in one case, and uh, uh, say a spectacular type of rock. It was a, it was a granite rock, and whatever. Uh, so uh, they decided to go that way, and, and among other things they, they did, that the organization did, was we uh, uh, sent a young student from the University of California out to survey this, this area and determine whether or not uh, we should be thinking about a national uh, park. And that, <clears throat> that was done in 1958. Uh, and <clears throat> the, uh, the uh, uh, consequence of that was a, see, what was it? The, a prospectus for the national, for North Cascades National Park. And it was this young man, it was a brilliant young man. He really put the whole thing together. We, uh, one of the people from our organization uh, went with him, uh, John Worth, and uh, they uh, put this thing out and uh, really advocated why we should have a national park. Uh, and so we we decided then it was not just the Glacier Peak Wilderness area, it was going to be uh, the uh, it was going to be uh, the North Cascades. And, <clears throat> and in that North Cascades proposal would be the community of Stehekin. Uh, so uh, this is why Grant McConnell, living in Stahegan, wanted this thing pushed beyond Glacier Peak, which was really on the boundaries of, of uh, say, uh, Stahegan in a way. And <clears throat> the, the uh, uh, result was that uh, uh, we began to draw boundaries of what we wanted there. <clears throat> And those boundaries that we came up with, uh, we were asking for uh, something like um, uh, 1,308,000 acres. All the area that went from, from uh, Mount Baker, we tried to include Mount Baker in this, Mount Baker to, to the Metau, uh, and uh, no, we didn't go to the Metau, we, we went just to the we went to the, uh, we didn't get into this, that uh, southern area of the, of the Cascades. We were strictly in the, uh, actually the eastern area of the Cascades. We were in the, say, in the western part of the Cascades with that particular proposal. 
Well, now, now the job was to try to convince, say, Congress to go along with this. And <clears throat> that's not an easy job, just as we're finding out right now, as we're trying to expand the park again from uh, what it was. But <clears throat> the, uh, uh, we, we had gone to uh, Senator Jackson because he was chairman of the, of the Senate Interior Committee which was going to be the committee that really decided whether this was going to be a national park or not. And there were also the House Interior Committee. They too had a role in deciding whether this was going to be, say, a national park. <clears throat> we, w we went to Jackson, met with him, and he said, okay guys, he says, you get up the parade and I will lead it. And so. We had that responsibility, but we were building that parade already. <clears throat> and among other things that we managed to get was that we, we met, began to get, uh, say, uh, uh, editorial support from the Seattle Times. Uh, the uh, fellow by the name of Walt Woodward was assigned by the editor of the, of the paper to do some uh, studies of this. and he. He wrote up with, uh, about uh, five editorials on this. The Bullock family was talked into a, a possibility of doing a film on, for uh, KING TV. And the Bullets, of course, were very pro-conservation in their own minds. And so they decided to do it, but they decided to do it because they, they were not going to take a position. They were going to show both sides, our side and the side of the, of the, uh, uh, of, let me say, the opponents to the park. Well, when the film came out, we were so organized, we had so much information on this, and our opponents really looked kind of bad. They, they didn't look terribly good on this thing. So it, it was really a film that came out in favor of, of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, North Cascades Conservation Council. So uh, we were really on our way and uh, say this, this and the project, I think we, uh, we were, we were getting community support. And now, how to convince Jackson that we'd gotten up that parade. Uh, uh, he had had some <clears throat> background as a young boy in traveling in the Cascades. He made a few trips into the Cascades as a young, say, teenager. And he had enjoyed the whole experience that he'd had there. So the, uh, uh, we had somebody that we thought was in favor of what we were doing. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, we did have some opponents to this. There was a, and I think you asked me this question when you uh, called me. Uh, who were some of the opponents of this particular park? Well, one of the opponents of that of the park was a, a, a group called <clears throat> Outdoors Unlimited. That was formed during our Glacier Peak area days out of, out of uh, Chelan because George Wall in uh, Chelan owned a box company and that box company he was visualized logging the Stahican Valley and the uh, uh, other tributaries of the Stehegan Valley for uh, wood for his apples that were there in that area. Because in those days they weren't cardboard boxes, they were, we always had wood boxes that uh, apples and other fruit came in. So <clears throat> he was very anxious to that and he got a hold of this, of the minister 
of the uh, Episcopal Church in, uh, in uh, Snehekin, and he got him convinced that some way, I think he probably paid him to form an organization called Outdoor Unlimited. Um, I had an opportunity to, to, to uh, uh, debate the uh, minister one time. The, was, uh, when I was, uh, say, first president of, the, of N3C, the Society of American Foresters decided that they were going to have a meeting on this particular issue, say Glacier Peak at that point, and <clears throat> uh, whether or not, uh, say, this is something that should be done. They invited me, they invited the, the Reverend Riley Johnson, who is the head of, of uh, Outdoors Unlimited, and <clears throat> to come to uh, Seattle and uh, to speak. <clears throat> 